What's up, guys? Welcome to the Being Beautifully Honest podcast and channel. Thanks so much for being here, for being subscribed if you are. If you're not, go ahead and hit that button. And if you're listening to this on YouTube while you're at it, hit that like button. It's like walking into the room and hitting that light switch. We just want to go ahead and brighten up the place. So let's get into this conversation slash reality chat. And although Monique Samuels is no longer on reality TV, that's how we know about her. So that's why I'm just kind of putting her in that category. And, you know, Monique, she loves to talk (laughs) instead of just trying to utilize her her right to remain silent, at least for a while, because the more she speaks and the more things are reviewed that have already been done and said by her over time on the reality shows that she's been on, the more she just kind of makes herself more unlikable. And listen, I'm not here to hate on her. I don't care if people come in the comment section are like, what are you talking about her for? Or you're just a hater. She has nothing that I want. Okay. I don't envy her. I'm not jealous of her. That is such a very lame and cold and dry read for someone to come out and say someone is jealous of somebody or you're, you're bitter or first of all, nobody knows me. (laughs) Okay. These people have nothing that I want. But if they choose to put their lives out there on Front Street, you give people the right to critique and to give their opinion. So I am opining, okay, and I am critiquing. And I was someone that actually really liked her in the beginning. But just over time and things that she said and done, it's just made her pretty unlikable to me. And a lot of people feel the same way. So yeah, she's got her fans And I feel that that's ridiculous, too, because I don't know why these people fan out over these people that wouldn't piss on you if you were on fire. They wouldn't spit on you if you, you know, needed some area of hydration (laughs) on any area of your body. They could care less about you. I don't care if they call your name in a chat, if you are watching their their live video on Instagram or wherever. They don't care about you, okay? So quit worshiping these people. It just, I'm just, that's just a little bit of a tangent that I'm going off on because I really don't understand anybody, even if it's people that I admire. Like, I don't worship anybody. I don't fan out over anybody. People are people. They are no better than you and I. So stop idolizing and worshiping these people, okay? And people have the right to share their views and opinions on people that are putting their lives out there for people to critique to critique, and to review. Let's just be honest about it. When you have these platforms where you're putting your personal lives out there, I'm not even talking about people who are actresses or singers or whatever. That's like your job. For people who choose to put their so-called real lives on these reality shows, you give people the right to critique it. That's just plain and simple. So for people to say you don't have the right to judge, we're not judging. We're giving our personal opinions and views based on what they put out there. So we just have to be clear on that. Okay. So I'm going to continue (laughs) and say this. I, you know, I talked about this previously and I played a clip of a live video that she did on her Instagram where she was giving people her reasons for why she went ahead and filed for divorce when it really doesn't require an explanation. So I'm not here to say that she shouldn't get divorced and she should stay with her husband, stay in her marriage, fight for it. I'm not saying any of those things. I'm saying, why do you need to give a soliloquy to the world (laughs) about it. That to me, I feel is absolutely ridiculous, especially when you're not on reality TV anymore. So to me, in my opinion, I feel that that's what she's shooting for eventually. You know, she said some things in that live video that just made me feel that, yeah, she got what she was looking for. She got what she wanted. She was looking for the opportunities that she got, which is now she is a host on a local radio show. She loves to talk. That's perfect for somebody who loves to talk to be on radio. And it requires a lot of speaking, a lot. She loves to talk a lot. So would she have been given that opportunity had she not been able to 
be in a marriage with Chris Samuels and once be a housewife of Potomac to once be on a show that she was a headliner for love and marriage dc for one season granted but yeah she got that so that's all on her resume these are things on her resume when people are on these shows these are resume builders people it's yeah it's a paycheck yes it's an opportunity but you have to remember just like most normal people that are looking for career building opportunities you are building your resume so that it can help you for your next step up period. So that helped her on her next step up. So people reported, and this is what they're saying. So I'm going to give it in their words. They say, our HOP alum, Monique Samuels, files for divorce from Chris Samuels exclusive. And it says people confirmed in October 2022 that Monique and Chris Samuels had split after 10 years of marriage. And that's a little bit of shade because remember, guys, She came out swinging last year when they reported that in October of 2022 that they were separating after 10 years of marriage. She did a video. She started speaking and then she panned over the phone camera to Chris and then she started laughing and then saying, you know, she it was just like a little video that she posted. It wasn't a live video. And then she said that they were going to come out later and discuss that. And Chris being the doting, loving gump of a husband, in my personal opinion, that he was, he was sitting there laughing and he went along for the ride and he came out and made this, you know, statement along with her to respond to people. And she was calling them irresponsible and them being a reputable, a a reputable outlet. How could they do something like that? People magazine is not media takeout. So when they made that report last year, I didn't doubt anything that they said, even with her coming out and saying, basically, don't believe what you see. You can't believe what you read. You can't believe what you see. It's not the truth. There's nothing to see here. Keep moving. I did believe them, but I just said, we'll wait and see, right? So people's reporting and confirming that, and they're saying Monique Samuels is shedding light on her divorce from Chris Samuels. In an Instagram Live on Thursday, the Real Housewives of Potomac alum, see, there you get that, resume building, because they're noting that. The Real Housewives of Potomac alum, resume builder, revealed how she knew when to walk away from her years-long marriage. She says, I was in therapy and my counselor asked me, what is it that you want? If you could have the ideal marriage, if you could have everything you want from a marriage, what is it that you want? And she told me to write these things down. Then she told me if he is unable to do those things for you and he is the same that he is now and he never changes, are you able to live life with him for the rest of your life? And she was like, I want you to think about it. Next time we meet, we'll talk about it. I don't want you to answer right now. And for me, just sharing things that you and your therapist spoke about, about something as deep as that is a bit over the top for me. I believe in therapy. I think it's a great thing. Get your therapy on. Absolutely. But I wonder how Chris feels about that. I, I, I really do. Because that's, even though, I believe that people who are whole should be married. You shouldn't say, well, I got the person that completes me. No, you don't look for a person to complete you. So in a way, it's like disrespectful to share that about Chris to the general public about what you spoke about in therapy, about if this person is unable to do these things for you and they just continue to stay the same. Well, how was he before you got married? Because if he changed then, and in my personal opinion, I shared my thoughts about this before, him going through mental health struggles and depression, what what would make you what would make you think that he would be depressed forever? Because unfortunately 
I know that it's a tough thing to deal with in a relationship with someone that is dealing with struggles like that, but they can't do anything about it until they choose to get the help. So no matter how much you try to force or threaten or give deadlines or ultimatums, uh, and I'm not talking about somebody that's a abusing you or even abusing themselves with drugs or things like that. I get that. I'm not talking about that. But that doesn't appear to be the case in this situation. Then they have to make those moves on their own to get the help that they need. It doesn't matter how much you stoke the flames or you're fussing at them and you claim you're trying to motivate them but you don't motivate people in that way it usually never works that way even if they make a move it's not heartfelt and then they won't stick to getting the help and the support that they need so if he was great in the beginning and then he started going through things that retirement that he went through after being in the NFL for so many years, I'm pretty sure that that was his identity. And a lot of people's identity is wrapped up in their careers. Unfortunately, that is a lot of what we deal with, especially here in the United States, where when you meet someone, you have a conversation, it's like, well, what do you do for a living? Well, maybe it matters, but why does that have to be my identity? Why is it that one of the first things that people ask you about? It's because That's the society that we live in. So imagine him being that from a child up until whatever age he was when he retired to not doing that anymore. Don't you believe that would have a depressing effect on him? Trust and believe. I know. I know. So anyway, I felt like that was extremely disrespectful, but that's my opinion. I'm sharing it. So she said two weeks writing down all of the pros all of the cons and really really thinking about it afterward I just got to the point where I was in a place where I was so miserable it wasn't just all on him it was also just with myself dealing with my own issues and trauma (laughs) understanding myself and why I respond and react the ways I do going through my childhood y'all I've done some work I've been doing some work and it ain't easy it's not easy to look at the things about yourself and that you don't like and you don't love and say, you know what? I'm going to love the bad parts of me. I'm going to love the good parts, which is easier. But even the things that I don't like about myself, I have to really embrace that and love that. You know, and I'm going to stop right there. It's true what she's saying that it really isn't easy to look at yourself and see the parts of you that you really don't like. None of us are perfect. And that's the thing. We are imperfect people. And when you choose to get in a relationship with someone, you have to know that that person is imperfect as well. None of us are perfect. And to me, I'm just going to say this real quick and I'm going to continue with the, you know, with what she said. To me, she's giving herself grace, but she isn't giving Chris grace. You know, and it's really sad Because most people looking at their relationship, although I get it, none of us were in their household, but I'm saying I don't believe that it was as bad as she's trying to portray it to be. My personal opinion is that she hit that 10 year mark. She said to Ashley on Real Housewives of Potomac that her prenuptial agreement expired after 10 years. (laughs) Her prenuptial agreement expired after 10 years. So she divorced at 11 years. Think about it, guys. Listen, I'm just trying to be as beautifully honest as possible and not tear the girl down. Do what you do. It's your it's your life. You live it how you want to live it. If that was your end goal, just say that. But to try to come out here, gaslight people, give these long soliloquies, and I went on a meditation retreat, and I was in therapy, and my counselor asked me, well, I want you to write the pros and cons of being in the marriage and not being in a marriage, and 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 if this person isn't able to fulfill your desires and your needs, can you see it? Like, girl, please, you really were never really that into him. I'm not saying that you didn't care about him. I'm definitely, I'm not even saying that. Most people just came right out and flat out said that she's a gold digger. 
I'm not saying that people should be in relationships and be broke. So I'm not even faulting someone for wanting to be in a relationship with someone that can provide for them. Absolutely. I don't believe in struggle situations either in terms of a woman getting with a man, like I've spoken about before, when Iyanla was giving this scenario of Ebony K. Williams is saying, well, would you date a bus bus driver? Hell no. She is who she is. She worked hard to get to where she is and she should not have to put herself in a position where she would be with someone that would be a liability. And I'm sorry, most women who are not African-American or biracial Let's just be honest, they're not going to put themselves in positions to be with a man that isn't able to provide more for them than they can for themselves because you wind up being a Sherry Shepard or a Wendy Williams or, you know, somebody like that. Even Melody uh, Cherie Rogers, to be quite honest, even though they built a lot together, but when I say they built together, They were in the marriage together, but he didn't really help her with shit. He was just along for the ride. And when she left his Dusty, you know what? He has not been able to get to a place where he's been able to do great things on his own, like she has been able to do on her own. And we as women, we deserve to be protected. And especially as African-American women, a lot of us are not. So I'm not saying that. That's not my point. But instead of her just being honest and saying, look, the the prenup, it expired after 10 years. I I tried, but you know what? I'm, I'm really tired of being up underneath big boy. I'm tired of, you know, doing things his way. I went along with the way he wanted things for 10 years, but now I'm free. And so I want to live my life the way I want to live it now. I had these three kids for him. We'll always be connected. We'll always have that love. But I'm just not in love. If she was just honest, yeah, some people might come out and say, she ain't nothing but a gold digger. But, well, be the truth. Her trying to just give these long explanations for why she filed for divorce when the simple point of the matter is that her prenuptial agreement expired (laughs) it's just as plain as simple as that I'm just being real okay so we know that it wasn't all on him when she said it wasn't just all on him so she says oh my god it has been quite a ride but I was determined to really do the work and grow and the more I grew and the more I started to realize myself and I started to create boundaries for myself that's when I knew I am no longer the person that I was when I walked down that aisle 11 years ago most people aren't most people aren't everyone should grow like are you freaking kidding me that's a stupid statement i hate when i hear people say you changed People should change. People should evolve. I'm not saying that people should change for the worse. Yeah, no one should have to accept someone changing for the worse. And when I say for the worse, I'm talking about being an upstanding individual to being a a deviant or a criminal or even a drug addict or whatever. I'm just saying, but someone who's going through a depression, come on now, someone who's dealing with mental health issues, someone who's dealing with physical health ailments and issues, stuff happens in life. So yeah, you definitely are not the same person that you were 11 years ago. So she continues, you get to the point where you just accept the fact that this is the fact, like this is where it is, you know? And that's what led me to the point where I was like, you know what? I think this is what will be best. The reality star added, if we keep going down this road and we're bickering at each other and we're not able to communicate, sometimes not even talking to each other, then how is this going to affect our children? Because I was thinking like most people, okay, we're going to stay together for the kids, but that never works because staying together for the kids means that you're giving them a terrible example of what a relationship should look like. Now, that is true. You don't want to give children a terrible viewpoint of what a relationship is supposed to be, but no relationship is perfect. And you do have disagreements. You do have moments where you maybe not speaking to each other and whatever, but you work through that. That's what you should be showing your children. Now, if he's beating your ass or you're beating his ass, of course not. 
but that doesn't appear to be the case. She just seems to be an extremely selfish person, very self-centered. Some people call her narcissistic. I don't know. But I will say that I just believe she got to the point where the prenuptial agreement had been over, expired, and now her foot was out the door. And Chris, being the man that he was, I don't believe that he even thought about getting the prenuptial agreement reviewed again or having another one put in place or maybe him filing for divorce before it got to that point when things were looking a certain way but if he was going through a depression he wasn't going to be thinking that way you know so did she take advantage of him in some way taking advantage of his his mindset and mentality and vulnerability I mean let's just be honest we can say women should support women and women should be advocates for women, but I'm one of those people that I'm trying to be on the side of right. And not every woman is upstanding. Not every woman is right. And Monique has shown herself to be wrong in a lot of ways. I was one of those people, one of the first ones, I should say, when she got into that beat down with Candace on the show on Real Housewives of Potomac, I was like, that is wrong. And there were people out there advocating for her saying yeah well Candace was running her mouth and she got what she asked for it was not right it wasn't and I wasn't going to stand with her on that because she's a melanated woman so was Candace and Candace even though she says a lot of things that people feel are messy and whatever that woman I, I can't imagine that was traumatic so for her to talk about her personal traumas what about that traumatic experience of you beating down this woman and how she felt, you know? But anyway, she continues and says she's not going to go deep into what their problems were and say it really doesn't matter. We are where we are regardless without y'all knowing that information or not knowing that information. Uh, not knowing for that information, this is what I'm going to not do. I'm not going to say things that will paint a negative image of him, nor will he paint a negative image of me because at the end of the day, what's good is what is <laughs> basically they are writing the way she said it, but basically what she was saying is what good is that going to do? All right. She says, me trying to defend my actions and defend why I am where I am and putting that out on social media really does nothing for us and it does nothing for our co-parenting relationship. I know the reasons why and he knows the reasons why and we are where we are and that's it. Well, you see, that's contradictory as well because you're coming out here and trying to explain yourself, but then you're not giving the actual reason and saying, well, what good is that going to do? Well, what good is this going to do? This doesn't help her image in my personal opinion. It doesn't. So, you know, Monique, they say Monique's filing comes months after people confirmed in October 2022 that the now exes who share sons Christopher and Chase plus daughter Milani were separating. Leading up to that point, the former couple's marital woes were apparent during the first season of Love and Marriage DC, which aired early last year. And and they're saying later addressing in a lengthy YouTube video how they've been struggling in some areas of our marriage. She noted how fans saw everything that was going on between them on the show. However, she referred to the strife as a lot of confusion and crazy building up to that 10-year marker of our marriage. Girl, please, you were building yourself up to that point where that prenup was about to expire and then you knew you were out the door. You figured you'd give yourself a little bit more leeway and say, well, I didn't wait until exactly 10 years and go and file. I gave it a little bit more time and I went through therapy and I went on a meditation meditation retreat and I was writing down the pros and cons and I was looking at myself in the mirror and I was trying to decide what was going to be best. Could I continue to do this? Could I not continue to do this? Girl, you were in it to win it and basically in it to solidify your future. You spent those 10 years and I believe, to be honest with you, Chris knew what he was getting into as well. I've heard that he had done a previous girlfriend wrong and dumped that person for Monique or maybe not even dumped, but just got with Monique while he was with that person. I don't know. So like I said, I can't confirm it, can't deny it either, but those are the rumors. So I'm just stating what the rumors are. But, you know, with that being said, when she came out and addressed it, Last year, after people confirmed, 
she said that she was building her own home and they were still living together. Who does that unless that was your plan? Because when she came on Real Housewives of Potomac, she said they have four homes. Great. Kudos. Congratulations. So, you know, the two of them getting another home is not a big deal. But she said she was building her own home. When they came out to address what People Magazine had put out there last year, that the two were separating after 10 years of marriage. She was pissed that they beat her to the punch. She was pissed that they put that information out there. She was pissed that it may have sparked some things in Chris's mind. I thought we were going to try to work things out. Who knows what the pillow talk was. But she confirmed that she was building her own home. So I don't know all of this. I've been working on myself and I've been trying to figure things out and all of that stuff. When they came out and reported on what she said, she said, we're still living together right now. I wouldn't want to move out of this house and have a temporary living situation where the children aren't comfortable. So that wouldn't make sense. She said that she was remodeling the home that she had bought. And she said it has five bedrooms. It's a beautiful home. It's really nice on a little over an acre of land. And it's my haven. And I'm just waiting to finish the remodel. So when she revealed that she had purchased that house before that divorce was filed, it just, it, it's apparent that this was the plan. And listen, it's fine if that was your plan. But girl, you were never really in this marriage till death do you part. And that's the part that, I feel is like, stop gaslighting people. You knew what your intentions were. And look, I'm not even saying it's okay, but it's your life. Live it. You're the one that ultimately has to deal with that stuff. But she ultimately got what she wanted. So mission accomplished. So guys, you let me know your thoughts in the comment section. Thanks so much for being here, liking and subscribing. I'm Beth, just being beautifully honest. So until the next time, I just wanted to keep it brief, beautiful. And now I'm going to say bye.